Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm a board certified emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about when to spay or neuter a dog or cat. We'll be right back after these messages. Mojo would swallow things whole, a chicken carcass, a bird nest, and assorted stones and sticks. After surgery, Mojo had skin issues. He was constantly itching and scratching, chewing the hair right off of his legs. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. On the Dynavite, all of these symptoms disappear. Dynavite is nutrition. If you love your dog, you need to put him on Dynavite. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about when to spay or neuter your dog or cat. Now, after COVID-19 is over, I will tell you, we're going to see a lot more human babies and potentially more dog and cat babies. Why? Because so many people adopted dogs and cats during the pandemic that we've actually been seeing a lot of puppies and kittens come into the ER for medical problems. Now, as a veterinarian, I get asked, what's the best time to spay and neuter a pet? And this is going to really vary. I will tell you as a veterinarian that I've neutered really, really early, what we call early spay and neuter. And I've done the standard spay and neuter. Early spay and neuter is typically done when a puppy or kitten is less than 8 to 12 weeks of age. Now, that sounds super early, but most of the time when we're doing early spay and neuter, it's typically in a shelter situation. I used to work at the Massachusetts SPCA as part of ANGEL during my internship. And so we spayed and neutered really early just to help prevent pet overpopulation and to make sure puppies and kittens were spayed and neutered before they went onto the adoption floor. This was one of our key ways of helping reduce the risk of pet overpopulation and help prevent unwanted litters. Now, at most veterinary clinics across North America, they usually do a standard spay or neuter. And this has always been at, quote, five to six months of age, end quote. Most of the time with dog owners, they've all been taught to neuter around six months of age. With cats, that's a little bit different. And I'm going to say I recommend it by five months of age. There's actually a movement called Fix Felines by Five, in other words, by five months of age. And the reason why we typically spay and neuter cats earlier is because cats can go into their first heat cycle when they're really young, as young as four months of age. And yes, I've seen kittens that come in and they're only about eight to nine months of age and they're already pregnant. So ideally, we want to really make sure to fix felines by five to help reduce pet overpopulation. Now, again, in cats, it's going to be earlier, but we want to, quote, beat the heat. And the main reason why is during springtime, we end up seeing a lot of unspayed females go into heat and have lots of kittens. Now, while there's no easy statistical mathematical way of proving how many cats or kittens can come out of one cat, I'm going to say the estimate is anywhere between 10,000 or more. That's right. Because when one cat has seven kittens and each one of those kittens, even if 50% are female, go on to have seven more kittens and those seven kittens have seven more kittens, it becomes exponential on how much pet overpopulation we can see. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of shelters will do early spay and neuter. Again, most veterinarians are going to do standard spay and neuter at about five to six months of age. But I'm going to say that's changed dramatically within the past few years. And that's because there's been a couple of new controversial studies that have come out looking specifically at dogs. 
Now, there was a study that came out of UC Davis several years ago looking at golden retrievers, and this study suggested that spaying or neutering later in life may have some potential health benefits. However, this was only one study looking at one breed of dog, and there's probably some outside factors that can't be included when researchers are doing some of these studies. For example, I always say some of my best pet owner patients are really compliant. They're always going to bring their dog in for their vaccines. They're going to spay and neuter when recommended. So we can't always evaluate the environmental or socioeconomic aspects that go into some of these research studies. But I will tell you that my philosophy and what I do for my own dog is that I like to spay or neuter when the growth plates are almost closed. Now that's a tricky question because obviously dogs vary in size from tiny teacup chihuahuas to huge Great Danes. We're talking five pounds up to 200 pound variations in dog sizes. We know that most of the time, the smaller the dog, the sooner their growth plates will close. That's totally different from huge giant breed dogs that are gonna have growth plates that close much, much later. Unfortunately, there's no studies looking at whether or not delayed spay or neuter actually helps in our feline friends. But again, I generally stick with that fixed felines by five just to help reduce pet overpopulation. I want to step back for one second and say, what exactly is spaying and neutering? I've heard all different terms for this, but most pet owners don't even know what we're doing when we're doing these surgical procedures. So to clarify, a spay is when we're removing a female's ovaries and uterus. So we only use the term spay with female dogs or cats. We use the term neuter with dogs. When we say spay, it's generally removing the ovaries and uterus, although more recently, some people are actually just removing the ovaries, what we call an ovariectomy versus an ovariohysterectomy. When we neuter dogs, that's when we're actually removing the male's testes. So we only use this term in dogs. So what are the benefits of spaying and neutering? I'm a huge advocate of spaying and neutering. And the main reason why is not only does it reduce that risk of pet overpopulation, like I mentioned before, but it does actually help improve overall health. There are a lot of studies that are a couple of decades old that show that when we spay and neuter, it helps reduce the risk of mammary or breast cancer. Yes, that's right. Dogs and cats get breast cancer too. Now in dogs, breast cancer is aggressive about 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, it's usually benign. So whenever you notice any kind of mass along the mammary chain, you always want to have it removed surgically so we can evaluate whether or not it's dangerous or not. That's different than cats. If you're palpating your cat's belly and your cat's not spayed and you feel a mass or a lump or a lump the size of a pea near the mammary gland, 90% of the time, that mass is really malignant and aggressive. It's breast cancer. And that's typically what we call mammary adenocarcinoma. It's usually fatal. And that's one of the reasons, again, why I'm such an advocate of fixing felines by five, because we want to prevent that first heat to help minimize that risk of your cat developing breast cancer. Another benefit of spaying and neutering is because it really helps eliminate unwanted behavioral issues. If you've ever had a dog in heat or a cat in heat, you'll notice some behavioral problems. In fact, I've actually had multiple owners pay the $150 exam fee at the ER vet to bring their cat in and say, something is wrong with my cat. And when I ask more history, when I look at the cat, their cat is rolling on their back, trying to run outside. They may be inappropriately urinating. They're howling. They may be spraying. They're super affectionate. And it's because they're going into heat. So sometimes that behavior can be eliminated by spaying and neutering. Now, I will also say that when we spay and neuter, the younger we do it, the faster that pets actually recover. They usually have a shorter surgical and anesthesia time. We can see into their abdomen better because pets are smaller or there's less body fat. Again, dogs and cats bounce back so quickly from spaying or neutering as compared to humans. And that's because we provide good pain control, heat support, and monitoring. But in general, most cats or dogs are back on their feet within 24 or 48 hours, unlike humans who take weeks to recover. Another benefit of spaying and neutering is it really helps minimize some unwanted behavior. If you've ever smelled Tomcat pee, 
then you know why we neuter. By neutering cats and dogs, it really helps eliminate some behavioral issues like spraying urine all over your walls or in dogs marking your whole backyard. In other words, they pee, release a small stream every couple of minutes all around the yard to help mark their territory. So when in doubt, talk to your veterinarian about when to spay and neuter. Remember, it's going to help reduce that risk of pet overpopulation. It's going to really help prevent unwanted litters. It's going to help your pet's overall health and reduce the risk of breast cancer. It's going to help eliminate behavioral issues like spraying or fighting or marking. And remember, younger pets generally recover from surgery and anesthesia much, much quicker. We'll continue with this really important topic right after these messages from our sponsors. As a dog owner and veterinarian, I spoil my own dog, Milo. Not only does he get to sleep on my bed, but he gets his pick of treats whenever we go to the pet store. I want to take great care of him as he pays it back tenfold in loyalty and affection. I want to keep him as happy and healthy as possible. That's why I like to give him a dental treat that offers more. Daily Dose is a two-in-one dual benefit dog chew that supports dental hygiene and full body health. With Daily Dose, your dog gets a daily dental scrub and powerful supplements to help with the biggest health concerns facing our dogs. Daily Dose was developed by veterinarians to be simple to use and super effective. Plus, dogs love the taste. It comes in four types, available for joint, skin, heart health, or calming. What I like about them, they have ingredients that I'd recommend as a veterinarian, and they're made in the USA. To help keep your dog happier and healthier, try Daily Dose, because one chew a day may keep your veterinarian away. Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code ERVET. That's E-R-V-E-T. It's more than a treat. It's a treatment. One chew a day for happier, healthier dog ears. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We are back. We've been talking about when to spay and neuter your cat or dog. When in doubt, please talk to your veterinarian. But my general rule with cats is fix felines by five. We want to do this by five months of age to help reduce pet overpopulation, to help reduce the risk of breast cancer, to help reduce the risk of behavioral problems by spraying. What about dogs? Now, previously, I talked about this UC Davis study that came out looking at golden retrievers and the effects of spaying and neutering. And interestingly enough, this study was very controversial in veterinary medicine because a lot of veterinarians didn't know how to interpret it. In this study, they looked at golden retrievers, and in subsequent studies, they looked at Labrador retrievers and German shepherds. And what they actually found was that neutering or spaying before one year of age was associated with increased risk for joint disease or even certain types of cancer. The hard thing is, again, that study was only looking at one or two breeds of dogs. Well, more recently, there was a study that came out of UC Davis again, looking at 35 dog breeds. And in this study, they looked at dogs over a 10 year period. This study was published in the Frontiers in Veterinary Science, so you can Google it to find it. But what was interesting was there wasn't one size fits all recommendations when it comes to spaying and neutering. What they found was different from the golden retriever initial study. They found a huge disparity between different breeds. Some breeds developed problems when they were spayed early and some didn't. Some dogs developed joint disorders, but not cancers when they were spayed or neutered early. So it really varied quite a bit. The point of it is this study looked at different types of cancer like lymphoma, hemangiosarcoma, mast cell tumor, osteosarcoma. It looked at joint problems like hip dysplasia, ACL tears or what we call cranial cruciate ligaments and elbow dysplasia. 
And the hard thing was when they looked at more and more breeds, what they found in general was that smaller breeds often didn't have joint disorders, while the majority of big breeds like Great Danes, Irish Wolfhounds, German Shepherds, they did tend to have joint disorders. This is obviously going to be affected by nutrition and genetics. What they did find was, interestingly enough, Two giant breeds, Great Danes and Irish Wolfhounds, had no increased risk to joint disease when they were neutered at any age. They also found that certain types of cancer in small dogs was relatively low, whether or not the dogs were neutered or kept intact. In the Boston Terrier and the Shih Tzu, however, they did find that there was a significant increase in cancer with neutering. Now, I know this is super confusing, but I will say that based on this information, there's a paradigm shift in veterinary medicine in dogs to potentially wait beyond that six-month number when it comes to neutering or spaying a dog. So, So my general recommendation is talk to your veterinarian. Again, this is multifactorial. It's nutrition. It's genetics. So there's no firm number I'm going to say in dogs. In cats, yes, they need to be spayed at five months or neutered before five months of age. But when it comes to dogs, I generally say the bigger the dog, the longer I'm going to wait. In my own personal dogs that I've had, I usually neutered them between seven to nine months of age when I felt like their growth plates were almost closed. When in doubt, talk to your veterinarian. The jury is still out when it comes to dogs and spaying and neutering. But remember, When we do spay and neuter, it really does help reduce a lot of unwanted medical and behavioral problems. Again, it helps reduce pet overpopulation. It helps improve overall health. It helps eliminate unwanted behavioral issues. And remember, dogs and cats recover really quickly when they're spayed and neutered. They do very well from the surgery. Now, at the ER vet, one of the top reasons why I see really expensive emergency spays is from a disease called pyometra. I've talked about this in a previous episode of ER Vet. Pyometra is a disease that has a fancy name, pyometra, but it basically means that your dog's uterus is full of pus, and that's secondary to typically an E. coli infection. I typically see this in seven to 10-year-old smaller dogs. A pyometra is a life-threatening emergency. So if you notice that your dog is all of a sudden excessively thirsty, urinating, licking in the hind end area all the time, or has a vaginal discharge that smells like pus, you need to get to the ER vet right away because that's usually a life-threatening pyometra. Thankfully, with rapid surgery, we can fix these guys. But the cost for an emergency ovario hysterectomy can sometimes be several thousand dollars compared to a couple hundred dollars for spay when your pet is healthy and younger. So we know that the majority of older female small dogs will often develop this pyometra when they're intact. So I always say you have to monitor your dog really carefully to make sure they don't develop it. It's typically seen eight to 12 weeks after their last heat cycle. So if you're able to monitor them appropriately, especially several months after they go into heat, then most of the time you can catch it relatively early. But it can be a several thousand dollar surgery at the ER vet. When in doubt, again, talk to your veterinarian about fixing your feline by five or waiting until the growth plates are closed when it comes to certain large breed dogs. With golden retrievers, I might consider neutering them a little bit later in life, maybe around nine months to 12 months of age, but the jury's still out. There's still a lot of literature that needs to come out. So please talk to your veterinarian when it comes to this important decision to spay and neuter your pet. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me at drjustine at petliferadio.com. And if you like the episode, please take the time to write a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. With that, we're out of time, and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.